Hey, 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 welcome back to RM Podcast FL. This is your favorite podcaster, Romina. I hope everybody's having a great and a fabulous Tuesday so far. Or if you are listening to this episode any other day by Tuesday, I hope you have a fabulous day as well. Um, I'm super excited about today's episode with Mercy Support Services. We do have the CEO and the director of programs for the episode. Uh, Mercy Support Services service the people of Clay County, Florida, who are circumstantially in need by providing services that guide them to self-sufficiency. They do have amazing programs, you guys, and I ask a lot more detailed questions throughout the interview. They do also have an awesome event coming up on October 10th. I will attach the information, so if you do want to donate to a great cause, I would say this is one of the best causes you can donate to especially if you are a florida resident why not help your own community but to all my international listeners out there go ahead and click on the link any dollar helps you guys without losing any time we're gonna dive right into the interview and i hope you guys enjoy it okay perfect so thank you so much for tuning in guys just like i said on the intro today's guest is miss dina and patrick hi how are you today guys hi we're wonderful Doing great. Awesome. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for taking your time to meet with me. I know we met a little bit while back, and I was very excited. We got introduced through Edward Rowan, which yes. we interviewed as well. And I'm very excited about this this thing, this episode actually, because I want to learn more about what you guys do in details. And I know we kind of disclosure a little bit uh, whenever we grabbed a coffee a couple of weeks ago, but I feel like it's not as coming out there like people should know about what you guys do even more so i'll, I'll pass on the mic if you guys want to introduce yourselves a little bit so the audience can have a better idea of what you what your guys's position is as well okay okay well i'll start um my name is patrick hale actually my name is roy patrick hale so i go by r patrick hale i am currently the, um, the executive director, CEO for Mercy Support Services, um, have been a part of nonprofit since 1983, all the way back then. During that time, just after I came to America from Jamaica, um, I was working on my MBA while I was working for a nonprofit organization called National Council of Churches in the USA. And so when I finished my MBA in 1986, um, my wife thought, okay, he's going to Wall Street, going to make <laughs> big money. And um, I ended up staying with the National Council of Churches and taking a, a better position there. And so that started my um, professional career in nonprofits. I worked in several nonprofits, including a church, mm -hmm. St. Peter's Lutheran Church in New York City, Okay. and worked there for some years. And then I moved to Atlanta, worked at the Atlanta Union Mission, which is now the Atlanta Mission, for five years as their CFO. And um, then I went to Jacksonville and worked for City Rescue Mission for 13 and a half years in various positions ending with a CEO in the last seven years there. We started when Mercy Support Service was started in Clay County. Mm -hmm. uh, I was called to help and uh, I went in as a volunteer mm -hmm. and uh, seven years later, here we are as the executive director there. So you've been on the nonprofit world for quite some time. Mm -hmm quite some time. What, what keeps you in that world? Well, um, a lot of people think you, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel that go into nonprofit that you, you know, you're not educated, you don't have this, so you, you can't get a better job. What kept me there was my calling because I felt like the Lord was calling me into that setting. Um, and, um, most times we think of, uh, corporate, uh, uh, you know, the corporate environment where the bottom line is usually a, a dollar. Mm -hmm. How much we can we make? How much can, how can we um, build our earnings per share and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. But when you think about a non-profit organization, the bottom line really is a life saved. Mm -hmm. And what's the value there? 
That I like that because I feel like and I've tried to like to learn more about nonprofits recently, just because I feel as I'm being selfish, not giving back in some way, and I didn't really realize of how good it made me feel helping other people or just doing little things. Like it can be as silly as like dry, like paying forward for somebody on the drive thru mm-hmm. Last night, for example, I was out with my friends, and this lady, she, uh, it was a homeless lady that approached me, and she said, "Could I please?" have a uh, dollar to just for food she said i've been struggling just to eat and i and she looked really hungry and it was hot outside so i just handed her 20 dollars, and it made me feel so good like I, like little things like that like and that's why i want to learn more about the nonprofit world and that's why i connected with you guys too because mm-hmm. i just want to learn more how to give back to the community mm-hmm. like that 20 dollars might have not mean a lot to me but to somebody else that meant the Absolutely. world for it might be unfortunately sometimes for a week yeah yeah. How about you, Dina? How, uh, if you want to give us a little bit of background about you. Oh, well, I'm like Patrick. Most <laughs> of my years were spent in corporate America. Uh-huh. Um, so I came on with Mercy in 2017 and entered into the nonprofit world full time. Uh-huh. Um, I've, I've had, I guess you could say, some nonprofit experience just from serving and leading in my local church, uh-huh. which is obviously a nonprofit. Um, but on this level, this is the first run for me. So. Um, it was certainly a, a transition. It's mm-hmm. a completely different world than corporate America. Um, but I think like Patrick said, I've, I've always felt a calling to do more and mm-hmm. I wanted to make a difference. I've always just wanted to help people. So it's hard to, I mean, you're, you can do good in yeah. corporate America. I'm not taking anything from corporate America and I'm thankful for all my years there, but, um, I wanted it on a deeper level and I think God wires us to, to give back and to love others. And he found the perfect position for me to do that. So that's how I kind of, I actually served with Mercy back in, I guess, 2012 or 13 through my church, Mm -hmm. through a local women's small group that I was leading at the time. So I was already familiar with Mercy and I loved Mercy and what they um, represented. And then kind of some years went by and and I found myself back. So I'm (laughs) happy to be back a part of what everything uh, is. You mentioned it's very different than corporate America. Yes. Um, how is it different? Like, what if you can pick up two or three things that is very different? Ooh. Well, we're a Christian nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So the biggest difference, I think, and the greatest blessing to me mm-hmm. is to be able to operate and function daily fully in your Christianity. I think um, in corporate America, it's more difficult to do that. You have to be politically correct. You um, have to be careful about guidelines and Mm -hmm. boundaries and things like that. So it is a lot more difficult to really walk fully in who you are and your passions and who God's called you to be in a corporate setting. Mm -hmm. So the greatest blessing for me is that I can just fully be who I am in Christ and and fully step into the things he's called me to do. That is the greatest blessing for me. Um, I remember my first week starting, one of the things that oh, it really overwhelmed me. I don't even really know how I kept composure <laughs> in that meeting. But the day, the first day that I started was uh-huh. their staff meeting. Okay. It was my first day. And I remember he said we were going to gather for our staff meeting. And then they immediately prayed. They shared like a devotional time and they prayed. And I remember just inside, I was just overcome. I thought, this is amazing. Like, I'm going to get to do this yeah. on a regular basis, like weekly. So... That was really, um, really overwhelming. And then I think some of the other challenges, obviously, is, you know, with a nonprofit, you are dependent on community. You're dependent on donors. You're, you know, my salary, you know, keeping people staffed and keeping the organization afloat to do what God's called us to do requires support. So we don't have that constant revenue coming in from sales or whatever our product is we're raising those funds. So, um, you know, I can't lie. That was made me a little nervous about nonprofit. You know, yeah. I, I have a guaranteed paycheck with corporate America. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So, but this is, you know, it, it, it wasn't a promise. You know, it wasn't a promise. You never know what's going to happen. You just, you just don't. So it was a leap of faith. Um, but God has proven so faithful, so faithful through the process. So it's definitely different. 
So with what you're saying, because I work corporate America yes. right now. Yes. And um, you didn't mention, for example, in your first meeting, you guys prayed. Yes. Um, in corporate America or in the business environment, something that we are told to be professional, to keep away out of the table, would be the religion views, the yep. polit- uh, political views. Yes. Uh, because, yes, there is a mission to the company, which is, it can be any company, but at the end of the day, they want the cash flow, they Absolutely. want the sales, they yep. want this. But would you say because the religion and the community, like you guys' mission is, you guys have a mission like corporate America does, mm-hmm. but also you guys' community have the same faith and the same foundation. Would you say it's stronger than corporate America because of that? Hmm. That's a great question. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, let me say first of all that um, you can be a Christian in corporate America mm-hmm. and that can be your ministry. Absolutely. It is it is gonna be a little bit more you're gonna to have to be a little bit more tactical mm-hmm. and you're gonna to have to um, do lead more by example mm-hmm. than by taking out your Bible. Mm-hmm. So it, it it is not that to to be a practicing Christian you have to be in a right in a Christian organization. That's mm-hmm. not what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying, though, is that without organizations like Mercy Support Services um, or some of the others that have mentioned mm-hmm. uh, people, for example, the lady you talked about who is who is homeless, mm-hmm. folks like that has no place to go, nobody to turn to, mm-hmm. and it's organizations like this who, when they call us, we can say to them. Here is how we can help you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it could be that we help them and they end up working for corporate America. Then yeah, that's absolutely. that's not a that's you know that's not a um, that's sometimes a given that that's where they're going to go. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, um, we we focus more on service and mm-hmm. helping the person and getting the person from where they are to where they need to be to get them on a path to to become more successful. So what type of resources do you guys have towards helping somebody that is in struggle? I mean, financial hardships sometimes take place in our life, like it or not, life happens, you know, one reason or another. Uh, what are some programs that you guys have helped families with? Well, I'll, I'll start, but, but Dina, can, you can jump in when you feel like it. When, when we first started, we started with a call center. Okay. And so a lot of folks call in with who need financial help, mm-hmm. probably with their their um, utility bills, with rent, trying to find places to get food, medical, all all of those calls we get, and and because we're connected in the community, we can either help them ourselves or connect them with all other organizations within the community who are able to help them, and so. That is, that is the first place we start. But in addition to having a call center, and over the years, um, since 2012 to today, we have impacted over 26,000 people who have called in for help. Since 2012 to today. To today. That's seven years. Yeah. So it's, it's not a small number. It's not, no. So we are helping people within Clay County and sometimes without, but for the majority of people who call us, they are um, from Clay County. We also have a self-sufficiency program, mm-hmm. where, which is a residential program where folks can come in who have lost their home because of various reasons. Yeah. Um, Divorce, um, eviction, loss of job. You and divorce it. is a big one, too. Yeah. Because it's you sign up a contract. Like I, I think it's so silly because it's a contract you sign. Mm-hmm. But people don't even know the terms and conditions, but everybody wants to sign that contract. <laughs> which, that's an interesting... That's a whole other topic, yeah, that, which a, is an interesting another, topic to me. Topic, yeah. That's another topic. It's the most avoidable contract. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the most expensive yes. and the easiest yes. one to get, too. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. So, you know, somebody might become displaced or homeless mm-hmm. because of various reasons. Circumstantially, indeed, yeah. is what we, we say. And so we will help them through a program of self-sufficiency. 
identifying the barriers that are keeping them from becoming mm-hmm. self-sufficient mm-hmm. and then help them to walk through a program of self-sufficiency. You know, you can add some other details sure. to that if, as, you, as you feel like. But um, this program can last up to six months. Okay. Which means it's not a rehab program for somebody who has like mental health illnesses or um, addiction. drug addiction or uh, alcoholism or anything like that. Um, there are some people who have started there, but we have helped them to get off of that before they get mm-hmm. too far into it. Mm-hmm. And so we help people to get back on their feet. Right. And, and we are also partnering with um, our local um, SHIP organization, which is SHIP stands for State Housing Initiative Partnership okay. Program, to help people to get into housing. Um, we have the program there for what we call um, eviction prevention or rapid rehousing. And for, e- for rapid rehousing, we can help them up to a year. Eviction mm-hmm. prevention, we can help them up to six months to pay their rent, to keep them in housing. So those are some of the programs that we have that help people financially. Within those programs, we have, and I will let Dina talk about the care coaches and the financial coaches mm-hmm. that help folks not only to get back to where they are, mm-hmm. but to look towards the future and a hope. Yeah, because a lot of people, that's so true, because a lot of people, when they find themselves in that hard situation, they just give up or they don't have faith in themselves anymore. Mm-hmm. To like, yeah. they can do it and they can see a better day. Yeah. And that's, I, I really want to know a little bit and I want, the, I, I know we covered uh, the other day together, but I want to know more like, so the audience also is aware, like exactly like the six month program. Mm-hmm. Cause I think six months is way, it's, it's a good time frame to build new habits and, you know, mm-hmm. start building mm-hmm. a new life around it. Right. So right. Dina, if you want to talk us, go uh, through in detail, like sure. what those would be. Absolutely. Well, just to kind of, um, Going off of what Patrick was saying too, I think some sometimes in community, a little bit of the confusion that, that comes when people hear about mercy and they call in for help. And, mm-hmm. and we just want to make sure that it's very clear to the public is if it is a chronically homeless situation, mental health, drug addiction, you know, those are not cases that we're equipped to handle, but we can resource them. Okay. So we, if they call in and we determine that's the issue, there are places that we can refer them to okay. um, to get them the help that they need for where they are. Um, but your circumstantially in need um, individual or family is typically the single mom that's in her car with, you know, children or they're living out of a hotel trying to survive and get out of the cycle of paying the three and four hundred dollar a week payment to a hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's typically, as Patrick was saying, a divorce, um, a separation, a loss of a job. Maybe they went through an illness and they didn't have the, the PTO or vacation yeah. you know, with their job. So they got fired, whatever the case may be. So um, a a lot of the clients that we have, you have to kind of understand they are, they're living in crisis mode Mm -hmm. and many of them have lived in a crisis mode mindset, maybe their whole lives. So if they grew up in a family that was on public assistance and struggled to make ends meet and struggled to keep a job, or maybe there was addiction or abuse in their family when they were children, this is now just trickled into their adulthood and been compounded by their now own adult issues. So they're trying to navigate through crisis. So it's, it's interesting that, yes, we, we only have you know, a six-month program, and believe it or not, it goes by really quickly. Yeah. And we urge our clients when they come in, listen, take advantage of every day because you're going to blink and this is over. Yeah. So we do stress to them, you know, take a hold of this opportunity and make the most of it. So they come into a program, and basically, immediately we pair them up with what we call a care coach and a financial coach, like Patrick was saying. Mm-hmm. The care coach's responsibility is really, and, and I just want to say, all of our coaches are volunteers. Okay. They're also volunteers. So, again, not only are we dependent on support from community for funding, but we're also dependent on community for the services we provide. And we've been so blessed with incredible volunteers who have a heart to help others, who love the Lord, and they just want to step in and offer their own time to do this for folks, to see people succeed and get on their feet. So we pair them with a care coach. They typically meet for like an hour a week um, with the client. Mm -hmm. There's At the beginning of intake when the client comes in, we set some goals for them. We identify the barriers that Patrick had mentioned. And we address those. We come up with kind of an action plan or some short-term goals, Uh things that they can focus on to kind of start removing those things. They may not knock them all out in six months, but we at least want to start chipping away. And as you said perfectly, 
begin to give them a paradigm shift about their situation. So they start to look at things differently, believe in themselves, have some hope. A lot of these folks, they have said to us when we've asked them, what are your dreams? Yeah. You know, what do you want to do with your life? What, what's your hopes and dreams? What did you want to be? Yeah. And they will literally sometimes sit there, either one, they've never asked themselves that, or they've never been asked. So they don't dream anymore. They don't hope anymore. And that's really the they most... They just leave day to day and try to make it day to day. That is the biggest barrier. Like yeah. the transportation, the job, like we can, the education, we can work through all that. We can help you get your GED. We can help you find a job. We can help you find a car. But if you don't believe in yourself mm-hmm. and if you don't have faith that, that God can take you from this place to the next place and help you be successful, that is the greatest barrier. So the care coaches step in to love, to encourage to pray with our clients, to help resource them as barriers come up and direct them. Um, they There is accountability. They hold them accountable. Mm-hmm. So each week there are certain requirements that the clients have to meet. So there's forms they complete. There's paperwork they turn in. It's not strenuous by mm-hmm. any means, but it, there are certain requirements they have to meet to stay compliant. So they'll turn these items into their care coach who then gives it to us. So along with the love and encouragement, there's a beautiful balance of that as well as accountability. We do not believe in a handout. Our, our heart is to give you a hand up so that you can get back on your feet and be successful. So we try not to enable. Mm-hmm. We try to encourage and edify them to a place where they're doing things for themselves. So obviously, you know, we can provide every resource imaginable. We can encourage them for days. And yeah. at the end of the day, it is up to the client to do the work, put in the time, and, and do what they need to do. So we try to help them as much as possible Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, um, you know, to, to get past those barriers and move forward. Yeah. I like how you guys have the program because I know there might be other corporates, or like other nonprofits out there that might just give X amount of money to help you for mm-hmm. the month. Mm-hmm. But you guys are actually focusing on the deep core of like the changing the habits, mm-hmm. knowing the person. Yeah. Why are you here? And most of them, like you said, they come from families that have just lived day to day to day. So they sure. ne- even when they're kids, for example, they never got the, what do you want to do when you grow up? Absolutely. What are your dreams? Absolutely. So I think you guys doing this is really great because once you flip that switch for them, it's, yeah. gonna, it's a domino effect Absolutely. towards their kids of their own too. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what is like one of the biggest reasons that you see sometimes people like, do you guys have people that come back? Because you can um, give all the resources out there, but some people need two, two times or three times the process in order to get it. Right. Do you guys have those situations that people come back? We've had situations where you know somebody has left and they have their own home, they're paying rent, and they run into a situation where they can't pay their light bill because their car broke down and so forth and so on, and we have stepped back in and helped them with that because... Mm-hmm. In, in, our, in my mind and in our mind, we have already invested in this person. Mm-hmm. So and, just one and, less. Yeah, and if we, are, if we are convinced that this is a legitimate situation, yeah. then we want to step in and help them right. so that they can continue on the journey. Right. So you guys, it's not just a program that you guys built. You guys build a friendship and a relationship for right. life, too. That's right. cool. Yeah. Have you guys ever had anybody that... Um, was you know was a client at some point and now comes and back and volunteers we have had a financial coach okay. um that i can recall off the top of my head who was a client at one point and came back to financially coach someone she's doing great in her life um, that's amazing yeah she's got a great career and she just wanted to give back um, i'm trying to think of any other we've had people who have become donors Oh, well, yeah. We have gone to sure. work and, and are donating. It gives me, like, yeah. chills. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we had one particular family who, um, last Christmas, mm-hmm. they, I don't want to give too much detail because we don't want to, but one member of the family yeah. donated over $600 at that time because she was putting away that money for something yeah. and she felt like she should give it to somebody. Yeah. To an organization and her mom says who do you think you should give it to yeah and she brought it to mercy yes i had the chairman of the board call her just to talk to her to say how amazing that was and yes. to thank her that's awesome because you never forget where you mm-hmm. come from that's really awesome and i feel like you got that's like an inner pride to them mm-hmm. like look at what we made look right. at what we did right. is there like a certain 
family or a certain person, and I'm sure you guys have like a hundred out of twenty six thousand people that you've helped, like a hundred of case scenarios that you might have cases. seen. Yeah, you might have seen somebody like be not rock bottom, but even below rock bottom, like mm-hmm. really help, oh, and then seeing where they're at right now, it just mm-hmm. makes you sit back and just, you know, be happy and seeing like the product and like what you guys brought to their life. Mm-hmm. Any situations that you guys want to share? We we talked about this one, and and I'm I'm gonna share it as vague as I can because um, okay. I, I I don't want, to. <laughs> but anyways. This family came into Mercy back in 2013, mm-hmm. and um, the the father, the the dad, the husband, um, got a job about seven miles away from where they were living, mm-hmm. and there was a friend who was giving him a ride to work back mm-hmm. and forth, and the friend left that job. No, he has no way to get to work because he doesn't have transportation. Right. And there's no bus system from Clay County to where he was working. Okay. We got him a bike. And he rode that bicycle to work, rain or shine, every day. His manager recognized not only his tenacity, but his perseverance. Mm-hmm. And helped him to get a car also received a promotion on his job and several promotions after that. So he moved out, went on his own yeah. with his family. I was visiting um, an, an organization recently, just earlier this year, and the, the gentleman who was um, in charge of the cleaning and the carpeting and all of that kind of stuff I was looking at him and and then he came up to me and said, Mr. Patrick, you don't remember me? And it was this young man. Six years later, he is doing much better than when we last mm-hmm. talked. We have talked on and off because his phone, his cell phone number is still in my cell phone. And so when he gave me his number, I said, I have your number. Yeah. Um, and so we have talked since then, a little bit shy to come on and, and do, do his testimony, but that is an amazing testimony because that shows longevity. It's, mm-hmm. it's over six years that he has gotten some help, but he had the, um, the ambition, if you will, and uh, understanding that he has to take care of his family, so he continued to grow from that point forward mm-hmm. and is still doing extremely well. And that's just one one case that I and can speak of. And that's just as simple as, as simple as just getting a bike for him yeah. to get him there. Yeah. It's crazy just how something that small can change somebody's life. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's amazing how sometimes the smallest, what seems to many like a small barrier, can turn into such a huge problem. But there's an easy fix. Yeah. And many times there's an easy solution that can prevent it from snowballing. So had he not worked out the transportation and had lost his job and it would have gone down the hill and just... from there. Yeah. So, so his, yeah, his attitude and, and his wanting to, mm-hmm. to um, do well to take care of his family yes. is a gr- big part of that. Yes. So uh, we're, not, we're not losing sight of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but without that cup of cold water, yeah. he probably wouldn't have made it. Wow, just a, that's so, like, just a bike to change somebody's path pretty much for their whole life. Yeah. What, um, what, I know you mentioned Clay County, and we're in Jacksonville, Florida, but you guys are in Clay County, mm-hmm. that's where you guys operate. Right. Um, what do you wish your community learns from your guys' nonprofit and from your guys' mission? Wow. That's a great picture. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I tend to ask deep questions. <laughs> yes. As we, as as I'm thinking about that question, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, where is our county going, and where was our county six, seven years ago? Mm-hmm. Who was taking care of the folks who were hurting and had no place to go? I mean. Mercy stepped in and is doing something that there is no other organization doing. 
And so what I'd love for our leaders and, and our county to understand is that mercy is not just helping families. Mercy is building community. Yes, I like that. Because when you think about it, when you think about a person who was depending on the system, um, um, uh, not paying any taxes, not paying any rent, not, not getting a handout for everything, that person is not contributing anything to the society. When Mercy steps in and helps that person, not only does it help the person, but it also helps the community. People around that person. Not, mm -hmm. And not just fiscally, it helps the community, but also in a more social and in a more neighborly fashion, it helps the community to grow and to look better. So if you were to extend your mission, and because you guys have great results so far, but if you wanted to extend your mission to add something else or like a goal that you guys wish to bring to the community in the next five years, what would that be? Well, I, I will introduce this right now since you have asked the question. Because we, we have a vision to put in place what we are calling Mercy Village. Okay. And so Mercy Village would be somewhat similar. And I'm, I'm going to give Soulspacker the, the phrase here to the Soulspacker Village that built on the, the north side of town. Um, where the first floor of that property is wraparound services, meaning all the services that a person in that situation would need, a laundry, um, cafeteria, um, um, dental, uh, social services, all those services would be on the ground floor. And then on the second and third floor would be apartments. That's amazing. Apartments yeah. that would be available to our program graduates um, workforce um, housing, housing for seniors who are on a fixed income, and housing for veterans. And so that is what we're looking forward to putting in place in Clay County. Um, something that is aesthetically pleasing, but something that the county needs right now because affordable housing or workforce housing is lacking. And um, we would love to see that come to pass. That is one of our, our vision at this point. I'm, I'm very glad I asked that question. Thank that you. Is, <laughs> that, that is actually really amazing. Yes. Yeah. Like just, it, you just gotta, it's a village, you know? It's, yeah. it's your own town. Yeah. And everybody would feel welcome and everybody, like you can have, I feel like you can have people that you helped in the past just stop by and just give, yeah. give a good word to somebody. Because so, it's so weird how people function. Like we can have a conversation and you can literally tell me just one sentence and that gets stamped on my brain. And if I have an obstacle, I'm going to think of that yes. one sentence. Mm -hmm. So like just even itsy bitsy moments like that if you guys have those it would be a chain effect and it would be a domino effect to the mm -hmm. rest of the community mm -hmm. which that's amazing yeah and i know you guys have an event coming soon in october we do have an event i, I want to say one more thing about mercy Village yeah. is that it it would be self-sufficient mm -hmm. in that we would be having we would have to raise funds to build it but once it was built because of rental and everything like that, we would be able to run the center without major donations going into it. I wanted to put that yeah. in there because that's important. Yes, it is. Well, um, we have our major fundraiser, which is going to happen on October 10th. Mm -hmm. This is what we're calling this year is Mercy's Night of Hope. And we are expecting about 260 people to attend. Um, last uh, last year we raised uh, grossed about seventy seven thousand dollars, and this year we are hoping to do better than eighty five thousand dollars from that. The event is gonna, as I say, it's gonna be on October tenth. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be at Sullivan Hall in Fleming Island, and it will start at six o'clock. Okay. And seats are a hundred dollars, and uh, we are looking for sponsors. You can get a table for a thousand dollars. You can be a sponsor. Um, a silver sponsor at $2,500, a gold sponsor at $5,000. We already have our 
title sponsor, Odessa Realty Investment, and they are a $10,000 sponsor. So it is on its way. We have we already have uh, 23 tables sold. We are only wanting to sell 28 tables because of the space and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be an amazing event, and we're so looking forward to it. Yes. And if people cannot join the event, because we have listeners from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Most of our listeners come from, come from America, but we have international listeners or uh, people that might want to help, might mm -hmm. want to donate. Where yeah. can they help? Because what you guys are doing, it's really amazing. And every dollar helps. Absolutely. So yes. all my listeners out there, all 900 of you guys, a dollar everybody <laughs> to help yes. this awesome, awesome nonprofit, <laughs> what they're doing. Yeah. Um, where can people donate or where can people find you guys? Well, we are, um, our website is mercysupportservices.org. Mm -hmm. And so if they go on that, they will see the event mm -hmm. and they can donate to the event directly or they can donate to Mercy directly from that website. And I'll make sure to put the link in there too. Absolutely. Right? Because anything can help. I mean, a dollar might help just that one family Absolutely. fill up the rent. You never know. Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. I said earlier, that $20 didn't really mean a lot to me. But Absolutely. to somebody else, it means the world. Absolutely. So just Absolutely. things like that. Yes. Now, I would ask you guys both this question. And you can take your time with it too. Okay. But what selfish satisfaction has this organization brought to you? Because I know, mm. I know you, you're out there to help people, but you also have a selfish satisfaction within it. Like, what, what, what the satisfaction would be for both of you guys? I think for me, that's easy. Um, watching what God does through your yes mm -hmm. is amazing. So, as we say yes to a client or the mission in general, and we're able to work closely with the clients and you watch God begin to move and transform their situation and transform their heart and just help them do that whole mind shift about their lives. I mean, the satisfaction in that is indescribable. And the fact that he even chooses to allow us to be a part of that is overwhelming. Like it's just truly overwhelming. And, you know, I'll, I'll say this for those especially that are maybe in corporate America or you're not in a nonprofit and you feel like, like I did for many years, that you have to be a part of a church or ministry or nonprofit to make a difference. As Patrick was saying earlier, that was one of the lessons I had to learn really early in my walk was, you know, God dispatches us in various places. He needs us in hospitals. He needs us in corporate America. He needs us everywhere so wherever God has placed us that's our mission field and for me when I was in corporate America there was a season there where that had not clicked for me yet and I remember I was very involved in ministry but I kept it very separate I guess I looked at it as two different parts of my life I had my ministry life and then I have a day job kind of but thing you that pay my bills. Them. right so I remember sitting at my desk one day and I was just feeling unfulfilled and kind of frustrated and thinking, gosh, you know, I don't, I don't want to die behind this desk. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't want this to be all that I do in my life. I feel like I should be doing more. And I remember, I literally ended up in the bathroom crying because I remember feeling so convicted. I heard the Holy Spirit tell me in that moment that why would I give you a greater field to service if you're not manning the field I've put you in? And that was a real checkmate for me. <laughs> I was like, Whew, okay. And I remember going to the bathroom and just saying, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And the truth of the matter is, was I worked around a bunch of younger women, mm -hmm. um, young girls, and many of them were going through a lot of things. And, you know, I was older and they thought I was the weird Christian in the department. <laughs> I mean, they loved me and they were kind mm -hmm. to me, but I was like that girl. I was the girl that did the mission trips and just, you know, whatever. And they were young and living their lives. And But when I finally realized what I was doing, and that that's not how God designed us, that we're supposed to be his light wherever we are. So I got checked on that, and I got my mind right, and I said yes in corporate America, and I didn't, like, go around with my Bible, like Patrick yeah. said, but I just said, God, I'm available. Yeah. I'm, av I'm here. I'm awake now. I'm available. Use me if you ch so choose to use me in this way. Seven years went by. I'm still in corporate America. Now, I could have gotten really upset and bitter, like, okay, God, I said yes. Why am I still doing the same thing? 
But those were the most beautiful seven years of my career there. The most beautiful. And I watched God move in so many ways. So our yes is something that cannot be measured or weighed. Our yes to do what he's called us to do and step into that fully changes lives. It, and, and it's not to toot our own horn at all. It's mm-hmm. not to say, oh, you know, the, the Christians are the ones with the power and the ones... No, it, it is simply our availability. It's God's ability. It's our yes that he takes and then he'll move in and through you for other people. So had I not done that, I would still be sitting there bitter in my desk. So I just want to encourage people that are listening, no matter where you are, no matter where you work, no matter how you spend your day, that if you're a Christ follower, you have a calling exactly where you are. So just love people and serve people wherever you are. And if that's meant to, um, it also helps you grow and develop. Mm-hmm. And then if that's meant to lead you somewhere else, it will. And you just you just trust him with that. You don't worry about that. You just trust him with that and do what he's called you to do in the moment. So the fact that all of that, I look back at that whole journey and where I am now, and I, I go into work every day and I just thank him. I just thank him that I get to be a part of something that is so much bigger than me. Like it's it's him. You know, and I'm just lucky enough to be, like, a real part of this, yeah. you know. And had I never given my yes and, and turned my obedience over in the current situation I was in, I don't think I would be where I'm at right now. It would have never happened. Mm-hmm. So my satisfaction and my guilty pleasure in it all is just watching the Lord do what only he can do. I feel like the whole thing can match with one of my favorite quotes, too. It says... There's two important days in your life. The day that you were born yeah. and the day you find out why. Yes. And I felt like you yes. had hit that point. Yes. And yes. like you said, like it's been seven years, the last seven years. Mm-hmm. Like your life has been different. Oh. Would you say you've been much happier? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's hard, though, to go from oh, the yes. jump. Yes. It was a scary jump, too. It was a very scary jump. And it took a lot of faith. And, you know, I, I could have just... Sat there. Said no in fear of the change in income, the, you know, the change in benefits, the how it was going to impact my family. And, you know, I spoke, when I first interviewed with Patrick and, and his wife, his awesome wife, Selena, my goodness. Um, yeah, she, they're, I, she's amazing. I did meet her. She yes. is really sweet. She's so amazing. I wish I could put her in my pocket. Like, all the time, <laughs> just keep her with me. But I met with I, them. And I tell them to it. my family members, too. Like, you're yeah. so cute. I want to just keep you in my pocket. In my pocket. Keep you with yep. me everywhere. Keep you in my pocket. <laughs> But after meeting with them, I mean, it was just like every bit of fear and doubt was removed. And I had one conversation to have, and that was with my husband. And mm-hmm. and he said, I support you 100%. And I look back, and I, I am so thankful that I was not afraid and said, I don't think we can do it. Yeah. It's changed everything. Even for my family, it's just changed everything. You, you did hit the second day of the most important day of your life. I did. Some of us are still on the search out there. You'll I, find it. I, I would You'll say I'm it. still on the search. You will. Just trust But like seeing how obedient. happy you look, just like oh, talking gosh, about yeah. it, like you just have this like yeah. glow and happiness in your face. And peace. Yeah. You have like That's very important. Peace you can't even describe when you're walking in his will. It's just that's what happens. How about you, Patrick? What's the the most selfish satisfaction you got from your uh, your life with Mercy so far? Hmm. Well, um, there are lots. So let me let me break it down to uh, probably the, the main thing. Um, a friend of mine, where I worked before, mm-hmm. would say to you would have said to his folks. Um, there's one thing you need to you need to know that when somebody goes through the mercy program and is successful you cannot take credit for it that's right because if you take credit for it then when they fail you, you take the take blame credit, Absolutely. you have to take the blame for that as well yeah so i i learned that early mm-hmm. i i am happy for them i am very joyful for them, but I recognize that it is the Lord who is doing this. Mm-hmm. Because there are times when people come into the program and they don't make it. Yeah. What we say is that they actually discharge themselves. Right. Because they have chosen not to follow the guidelines that we have set. They knew what the guidelines were when they came in, mm-hmm. but they came in, got comfortable, 
and decided they were going to do it their way. And that doesn't happen. They just found like a, a warm spot for exactly. a minute. Right. Exactly. And so there are times when we have to um, say to a person, based on decisions that you have made and, and, the, and what we have seen from you, you have exited yourself. Yeah. And so we will try to find a place where you can go, where they might be able to help you. But at this point, we are not able to help you anymore. So when those things happen, how, do you, how does that make you feel? Um, were, were we a failure? Did we fail that person or not? No, we didn't. We probably have opened that person's eye to say, you know, I am not going to be able to, to be successful at anything if I continue doing things the way I'm doing it. You know the old saying. Yeah. You do the same thing. The definition of insanity: yes. doing the same thing. <laughs> so, so um, my my selfish reason there is that I feel I am confident that this is what the Lord has called me to. I've tried to walk away from it several times, and I've been pulled back to it. And I'm I, I am comfortably knowing now that this is this is my calling. And, and the joy that I get from this, mm -hmm. watching an incredible staff grow, we, we have an incredible staff. We don't always agree. We have fun together. We are very vulnerable with each other. Yes. And um, it's an amazing group that God is building right there. Um, I've never really had that as, as a leader before. Um, and so it is, it is incredible to watch that. So, I, I get a lot of joy from that. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of joy from seeing Dina grow or seeing Jeff grow or seeing any of the other staff members grow. Um, and so I feel like God has me in the right place. And there will come a time when I'll hand that off and move on. I love it. Because like if you, and I'm trying to do like a little bit comparison with corporate America. Technically corporate America, they either provide services or products, right? Mm -hmm. And that's their baby. Your guys' baby is the result of people's lives, yeah. which that's a lot more important than a product or a service. Mm -hmm. right? Because we sometimes we take life for granted or we take the good moments for granted. We take, you know, we stress out and we overdo ourselves without realizing we have like we should be thankful for what mm -hmm. where we're yes. at because there are people that have it harder. Yes. Uh, so it's just amazing to see how you guys kind of step back and say, you know what? I'm going to be selfless and get selfish satisfaction from helping others. And I just feel people that do that, I feel like there's a whole other place in heaven for them. <laughs> and I feel like it's, a, like it's a whole different area that you just need to, to reach that, you know, that level. It's, it's very different. Listen, as long as I get in the gate, I'm happy. <laughs> Lead all that special stuff. Just let me in the gate. Yeah. And my very last question, I, I learned a lot from this. Thank you guys for sharing. And I'm very excited for, especially Florida, we have little listeners, uh, just to learn more. And I really, really want to help out with whatever we can. Every awesome. dollar, guys, again, every dollar makes a difference. Yes. <laughs> yes, but I'll ask you guys this question is for both of you, too. Um, what is your personal definition of success? Hmm. My, my personal definition of success, I, I took this from, and I can't say it is totally mine, but I have adopted it over the many years, uh -huh. and I took this from Dr. John Maxwell. When he talked about success, he says, when you think of success as a destination, then when you get there, what happens? So when you think of success as a journey, then that makes a difference. So you're growing each time you're growing from one place and you're maturing and you're growing and you're maturing and you never stop learning as long as you live. And That's so the, the things that used to be very, very hard to reach or seem extremely important to you, mm -hmm. when you have overcome those things, they don't seem that important anymore. anymore. And so you keep moving from one to the next. And in so doing, you're helping people not just for yourself, you're helping people and you're bringing them along with you mm -hmm. as you are growing and journeying towards 
whatever that looks like. Awesome. And my, my success is the hope of glory. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, oh, I think for me, um, doing the will of God, just knowing that you're staying in His will and you're doing what He's called you to do, and you never, never reach in a point where you feel like, Patrick just kind of alluded to it, is that you've, you've reached that point. Mm-hmm. You know it all now, you've reached perfection, and you've arrived. I think when we ever get to that point, we're in a dangerous place. Yes. When we think we have nothing else to learn. Um, servant leadership for me is huge. I feel like, uh, I read a book, um, The Servant, by, I think it's John Hunter. I mean, I think it's James the Hunter. Servant. James C. Hunter. It's an amazing book. I encourage you to read that, but it's called The Servant. And it's it teaches you about servant leadership and just what it means to... Um, be an example for people around you and, and people hear leadership and they think, well, that's just for like the CEOs or, you know, no, we're all leading somebody, mm-hmm. whether you're a mom, a dad, a big brother, a big sister, mm-hmm. you know, you're a team lead in corporate America and, you know, you've got managers, but you're still leading someone. And I think you have to be humble. Um, you don't want people to follow you because they have to. Like, I've always felt like that. I don't want anyone to ever follow me because they feel like they have to. Mm -hmm. I want them to follow me because they want to. Because they see me walking out whatever it is I'm asking them to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. I'm not... I'm not in this to get glory off of your back of work. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're a team, Mm -hmm. and I want you to want to follow me. Not because I told you you have to. I I don't want to have to tell you. I want you to come just because you want to be there. You want to be a part of what's happening, and... And I treat you well, and I respect you. And, I, and my biggest thing for, for people that I work with, whether at work or in church, is I want to see you be the best that you can be. Mm-hmm. So for me, even with our clients, if I can help you achieve your goals and be the best that you can be, then I'm successful because you're successful, if that makes sense. It does. Like I just want to see people be the best that they can be and be all that God's called them to be. And that, for me, if I can spend my life doing that, that's enough for me. And that takes... Servant leadership, it takes discipline, and it. I'm learning. I'm still getting better at this part, but it takes self-care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're not taking care of self, you're not going to be able to take care of and steward other people very well. So that I'm still growing in, of course. That's a work in progress, but self-care and discipline and servant leadership, I think those. that's the recipe to me for success. success. And, you, and you can tell that you're passionate about helping others. Yeah. Because you said, I want people to follow me because they want to, not yes. because I told Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which, comparing to corporate America a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I don't mean to bash on corporate America. Absolutely right. not. But just seeing some differences. Um, management or mm-hmm. higher management, they want, you, they want to lead and they want you to do X, Y, Z because they said so. Not necessarily yeah. always explain the logic behind it or the right. goal behind it and the mission. You have to just do what I say because I said so. But that's very important that's yeah. to explain, like, the goal, the mission, the, pick, the why. Like, yeah. the Disney brothers. Like, they build everything because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. they... Uh, uni- I'm sorry, Universal Brothers. Yeah. They build everything because of explaining the mission, the mm-hmm. why behind it. Mm-hmm. And people follow because they want it to. Mm-hmm. So once you get to that level, then you know you're in a good path and you know you have the right people, the right circle around you, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, like you said, it's not at all to bash corporate America because I've... Whether it's been corporate America or during my time, all the years in ministry, I've experienced both kind of leaders in both worlds. Yeah. So it's not even a corporate America or a nonprofit issue. It's a person issue. Well, the reason why I bring corporate America, because yeah. like I mentioned this with Edward too on the interview, I feel, I feel like the human side out of it is yes. being taken out. Oh, yeah. And at the end of the day, you put your head in your pillow, you're a human. You Absolutely. know, no matter what you did, no matter how much money you have, the Absolutely. house, you, you sleep, you're a human. You need to be healthy mentally, yeah. physically. And, but I feel like that side is being taken yes. out. Absolutely. And that's not every corporate. But there are certain corporates that they're just working to the max because they have to meet the goals and this and that. And Absolutely. I feel like if you put the human side out of it and yeah. feel the, the connection. Yeah. And have people follow you because they want to. Yeah. 
not because you just told them to yeah. and scare them with their pay. It would be it would be a whole different level. We have to remember that people are people, and and they have lives outside of that nine to five, and they're going through things as well. So especially as managers or team leads or supervisors. You have to connect with your people, not just for business matters, but as a person. Yeah. And you're going to get better productivity if yes. you do that. Yeah. Like, it, it's the ones that are kind of just those people leaders stick, that are, yeah. People stick around for people, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. I really enjoyed this interview, and thank you guys for yes, taking your thank time. thank you for, for having us. I know this lunch is on Tuesday, but guys, today is Saturday, and they took their time to meet <laughs> with me on That's campus. Okay. So. Yeah, no. Any any last thing that you would like to add to the episode? Um, and I'll make sure to attach all the information regarding the uh, donation process if they want to join. Yeah. The only thing that just jumped into my mind is um, we have we are launching what we're calling our guardian partners, and our guardian partners are those people who have committed themselves to give to Mercy monthly, weekly, quarterly, but a recurring gift on and on. Mm-hmm. And that recurring gift has is what stabilizes our budgeting process so that we can know that this is going to happen and we can budget based on that. So I'm putting that out there and, mm-hmm. and your your um, recurring donation could be $10 or it could right. be $100 or whatever. That's a it Starbucks is coffee can, a month. Like exactly. You can do whatever that. Whatever you Absolutely. can afford and you do that on a monthly basis, that, that is extremely helpful to us mm-hmm. and to most nonprofit organizations. Yeah. I'll make sure to attach all the information there too. I didn't know that was there, but I want to sign that up myself too. Thank for the you. monthly why not? Awesome. It's awesome. it's a Thank Starbucks you. coffee. I yeah. Yeah. just make it at home <laughs> one day for twenty cents instead of spending six, don't, seven dollars. Starbucks will start coming after me and say, Oh, you're <laughs> yeah. taking away my customer. It's it's okay, we can do some sharing for a minute. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. If you wanna to listen to uh more episodes like this make sure to tune in on tuesdays and on thursdays and always itunes spotify stitches radio youtube podbean thank you guys for tuning in